at Lexington. They say that sometimes on the 4th of July, if you listen hard, right close to the statue of Minuteman Captain John Parker, you'll hear a great voice rumble, How stands the Union today? Well, Sir Captain Parker, many good Americans have picked up your musket since the War of Independence. And your countrymen have been through just about all the deceit, treachery, and violence that any aggressor can contrive. Yes, Captain Parker, another generation of Minutemen is on guard with weapons ready, ready for defense. They fire only in retaliation. It is our tradition. It will never change. There is new thunder in the skies today and saber rattling in far off places. Some call it Cold War. Some call for understanding. Those who really understand call for weapons. Weapons of massive power to back up our desire for peace. Two major construction contracts awarded by the Army Corps of Engineers to Morrison Knudsen Company and Joint Venture Associates helped answer this call for new ramparts of defense. Under the first contract, Morrison Hardeman Perini Level delivered Minuteman Missile Facility Wing 4 in December 1963, right on schedule. Wing 4, Whiteman Air Force Base, Sedalia, Missouri. 150 Minuteman missile launchers and 15 control centers deployed across 8,000 square miles. The second contract was awarded another joint venture managed by Morrison Knudsen, Wing 5, Warren Air Force Base, Cheyenne. Here, 200 Minuteman launchers and 20 control centers, America's largest missile base. A Minuteman missile launcher is a 12-foot silo 91 feet deep. The upper portion is a 30-foot diameter equipment room. Along with the support building, it contains the missile's firing gear. A remote control center, there are 20 altogether at the Cheyenne base, commands each flight of 10 missiles. It consists of a control capsule, an equipment room, a tunnel junction, and an access shaft. The above ground barracks provides the quarters for the Air Force technicians who man the flight. Cheyenne's a fitting site for the largest Minuteman base. It's big country, where pioneers with strong will and a six gun on their hip kept vigil over a vast frontier. It's a country rich in the heritage of the Old West. Cheyenne retains its frontier flavor, but a new breed of rugged people has shown up. Their talk is not of boots and saddles, but of cans, launchers, and control centers, of A-flight or N-flight, Baker 1, Papa 9. Construction men to change home on the range into a modern rampart spread across 10,000 square miles of Wyoming, Colorado, and Nebraska. Yes, the talk is different. The hats are different. So is old paint. Today, the top hands ride the range on the wings of a flying horse. Work is different, too. First, carve a bowl out of the ground. It's a launcher site, excavated exactly on line and 30 feet deep. The silo shaft goes in the bottom. When the bowl's finished, pick up and move to another site, one of 200. Six specialized crews do it six days a week. Their work paces out the job. Shafting follows bowl excavation. Four complete outfits with crews working three shifts around the clock, a six-day week. 
By taking a big gamble on a big new auguring machine, the MK missile men put down the big shafts, all 200 of them, like post holes. Their experience at Sedalia found its payoff at Cheyenne. Some shafts were excavated in hours instead of days. No, it wasn't a case of ideal material. It wasn't just soft ground and easy going. The big augers designed for the job and the largest ever used anywhere fought right through everything but solid rock. As they say, the impossible simply took a little longer, but the job kept right on its schedule. Success on the Cheyenne job depended largely on the ability of MK's men to complete 200 shafts on schedule and at feasible cost. This contract item involves 13,000 linear feet of shaft, a total of two and a half miles, 15 feet in diameter, 200 moves from site to site. It was completed as planned by closely scheduling the transport and work of four large augers and their crews. Two construction innovations, detailed scheduling and augering, resulted in clean cut shaft excavation on the line. While ingenious methods are common to MKNs, the work scheduling over the job site, bigger than some states of the Union, is the doorway to on-time completion. Its key is communication. 150 mobile radio transmitters in the field report daily job progress to project headquarters in Cheyenne. Work schedules based on these reports are set up on Friday. Black Friday, some call it. The problem is who will need what on which day next week and where on the 10,000 square mile project. The product of such scheduling is more efficient employment of machines and men. In short, earlier completion. Scheduled items are posted on completion, symbols of job progress. As a scraper is a tool for the hands, scheduling is a tool for the minds of heavy construction. Supplies, logistics, that's the story of the job. Just multiply everything by 200 and then haul it over 10,000 square miles. That's bigger than a Texas county. Bigger than Connecticut and Rhode Island, too, as a matter of fact. Concrete comes from one of six batch plants. A concrete ring goes between the liner and the silo wall. The launcher's equipment room on top of the silo is poured by a special conveyor designed by MK. It eliminates cranes for circular pours. It's light and easy to move. It averages about one yard of concrete per minute in any direction. It swings 360 degrees. The crew, like all crews on the job, are specialized. They all move from site to site doing their specific job for each stage of construction, then move on to another site. Lots of moves, but they produce results. Other things, too, once in a while. A headache for payroll. With about 1,650 MK people constantly on the move, wage rates for a job can vary from state to state. But then the job office, too, has specialized machines, IBMs, modern data processing equipment. It's a machine world. Scheduling involves subcontractors also, such as American Bridge Division of U.S. Steel Corporation. They fabricate and install the launcher silo liners. The liner is a magnetic shield for the missile. Generally called cans on the job, each liner weighs 36 tons. It's 61 feet long and 12 feet in diameter. Each one of the 200 liners must meet the mobile crews on site, on time, not one hour late. Even to the men who handle them, the cans are a good-sized item, a good-sized holster for a gun new to the Old West. As many as four cans were installed in one day, all 200 liners in less than seven months.
all of them came on site by truck from the Cheyenne yard. In some cases, it can be about 100 miles, one way. Not all back roads, true. Some places have no roads. Fifty-seven miles of new road had to be built. Some existing roads needed rebuilding. Most of the halls are heavy. But our newest gun is like a musket, Captain Parker. It needs no rifle groove. Its trigger is big, though it now goes on the business end. Sight Echo 2. The outer walls of the launcher's equipment room will be heavy reinforced concrete. After MK completes its work, the Boeing company, under a separate contract, installs the black box equipment that will trigger the missile. The construction contract cost of the Cheyenne Minuteman base, almost $84 million, is quite an investment. Even in our day, Captain Parker, its potential is dormant, always, we hope. Yet it feeds man's deepest urge, self-preservation. A 15 by 20 support building close by the launcher silo will house additional devices. The launcher will function automatically, entirely unattended, standing at ready. control center, soon ready to be covered with earth. There are 20 control centers deployed over the base, one for each flight of 10 missiles. They will be manned by technicians of the Air Force. The capsule-shaped building is the control room, the nerve center. From it radiates buried cable to each missile silo. The second building is the equipment room. The shaft is for access. Over at Fox 1, the superintendent elected to use a conveyor system rather than a crane and bucket for pouring concrete. He simply preferred it. Wide versatility is one of the big talents of the get-it-done construction people. Backfill operations are also scheduled in a cycle for mobile crews. One does the initial backfill to specified elevation and then moves on. Another crew comes in for the second stage. All of the backfill earth has to be carefully classified and compacted around the buried structures. They will withstand anything except a direct nuclear hit.
scrapers finish the job to the top of the access shaft. Finally, the launch control center, headquarters building and all. Looks about like any ranch house. The earthwork will be finished on swing ship. The outfit will move to another site, peg the charts. The job is getting done. Highly mobile crews with instant communications and tight scheduling brought her round the bend. There's one more big factor, personnel. Run-of-the-mill jobs might be supervised and supervised well by a few top men. A missile-based job on the go may require, say, a hundred or more top supervisors and engineers. Only a large construction organization can have the staff and background. It's a game for rugged men, thinking men, with a lot of work behind it. There's no book to go by. The Cheyenne job is one of about 200 various type jobs in progress every year by the MK organization. Silo slabs and doors are mute answer to the call for weapons. Blueprints are reality. In 245,000 cubic yards of concrete, 56,000 tons of steel. Steel enough for eight destroyers or 200 Minuteman launchers. No matter the words, the staccato voice of radio carries the same message and with increasing frequency. George One to headquarters, ready here for final inspection. Able Six to headquarters, final this afternoon, no problems, over. Car Five to headquarters, Charlie Six, okay. Releasing painters at Oscar Five, going to Papa Three, over. The dividend from item by item scheduling is history. The log, week by week of on-time accomplishment. Deployed on the edge of the Great Plains, America's biggest Minuteman base is the product of engineer mines of Sibemco, United States Army Corps of Engineers, Ballistic Missile Construction Office. In turn, it's a product of the brawn and brains of heavy construction. It's a far-flung bastion of stupendous striking power for the United States Air Force. Its purpose is defensive. Its objective is peace. It's the fervent hope of all that its naked destructive power may never be called forth. It may be, but only in retaliation. Calculate this force as best we may, then multiply by 350. 150 at Sedalia, Missouri, 200 at Cheyenne. How stands the Union today? It stands strong and ready, Captain Parker. The Minuteman demonstrates the advance our nation has made in the technology of solid fuel intercontinental range ballistic missiles. Thanks to the dedicated men of the Air Force, to the men of the Army engineers, to men of American industry, who serve this nation day in and day out, in the underground control room, in strategy and drafting room, the Minutemen of the 20th century.